The, the thing that really interests me is uh, the, the education and training piece that 5G will enable. Uh, more specifically, when we talk about augmented reality, um, uh, virtual reality, uh, right now, you know, I've got two girls going to middle school and they have iPads, which is great. You don't have to lug, you know, tons of textbooks along. But it's very much a two-dimensional thing. Um, so if you're talking about education where you can now do something where it's immersive, you're not just talking about the, the pyramids in Egypt, you're actually visiting them virtually as a whole class. Um, that's where it becomes interesting. In Verizon, we're looking at how to train our technicians using augmented reality. So when they are fixing those small cells, um, they can look at the small cell and they can see a diagram of what it's supposed to look like. And if they run into problems, the supervisor is there, uh, you know, as a little screen where they can now interact with them. Um, so those are the scenarios where it's possible to do that now on a small scale, but to make it work on a large scale is difficult, partly because of, you know, nobody wants to wear those clunky goggles. Uh, and oh, by the way, when you're ha having those, uh, no one talks about the big backpack with the computer in it that you have to have nearby. Um, so if all of those things, the, the, a big chunk of that can move into the network, which is what 5G enables when we deploy the multi-access edge compute, yet another mouthful, uh, of technology, uh, a lot of that stuff, the computing goes into the network. So what you end up with is devices that are very portable, potentially very lightweight, and potentially cheap, right? So if you add that combination, um, especially in spaces where, you know, schools and other places, that becomes a very interesting solution.